If any place can be called a town in Antarctica, it's McMurdo. No other base is a quarter as large. Much of the science on the ice is done in the field camps, but the population of this mining camp swells to nearly 1,000 in summer. By early March, all but only 150 or so will remain. Once the last plane leaves in autumn, there won't be another for six months, and winter temperatures reach 80 below zero with hurricane force winds. Support staff here outnumber the scientific researchers about eight to one. McMurdo has a fire station and a hospital a small chapel, and in the summer, a sun that never sets. The nearest real hospital, or tree for that matter, is 3,000 miles away. I spent some time here in the weather office building talking to the forecasters. I'm standing on top of the Met building here at McMurdo. This is where the forecasters work 24 hours a day. And let me tell you, they have a tough job. There's no GO satellite data. They just get a few passes from the polar orbiters Oh, maybe two or three or four of those a day. And think of trying to forecast for the entire United States with only four weather reporting stations. That's about what they're up against here. But every hour or so, they have to come up here and take a weather observation. And look at the view they have. You're looking across McMurdo Sound to Black Island and the Royal Society Mountains. It's just absolutely stunning here. And it's cold, too. This is everyone's favorite building. It's where the galley and the store are. And these signs are everywhere. Condition 3 means the weather's good. The wind chill is above minus 55. Condition 1 means a wind chill below minus 100, and everyone must stay in the building they are in during a Condition 1. The food is good, and it's free, too. The store has movies to rent, but some TV is received from New Zealand and Australia. A 20-minute walk away is Hut Point. Robert Falcon Scott, the polar explorer's hut, still stands here. Scott reached the South Pole just one month after Roald Amundsen in 1911, but he and his men died on the return, caught in a blizzard with no food. Antarctica is one of the driest deserts on Earth that, in the intense cold, have preserved the interior of the hut as it was left a century ago. It's like walking back into 1911. Clothes still hang to dry where they were left. Boxes of supplies are scattered about. No one leaves this place unmoved. No one. A short walk from the hut is Vince's Cross. It's atop a little hill overlooking McMurdo Sound. The cross honors George T. Vince of the British ship Discovery, who drowned near here on March 11, 1902. We owe a debt of gratitude to these early scientific explorers. One can hardly imagine how they survived in the harshest climate on Earth. Antarctic weather can change to deadly in minutes. Winds can blow the snow, reducing visibility to near zero. So before we could leave McMurdo, we had to attend survival school. The next morning, we boarded this vehicle called a piston bully and rode out to the sea ice. We were taught how to put up a tent in high winds and how to build a snow hut. The snow is very dry, and these snow blocks are really not that heavy. My friend Chaz Firestone of Brown University and I crawled into a snow cave. I'm rolling video too. Hi everyone. All right, can you see me? All right. Okay. Okay, okay, go, go. You're pointing it. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> hey, all right. <laughs> Very comfortable in here. Put your sleeping bag down. There's Chaz. He's hey. taking pictures. Yeah. There's the uh, the entrance. You can see I got a little bit of snow on me when I got in here. But these boots are the warmest boots you will ever see. I mean, my feet are toasty warm. Just amazing. We also had some time to play around a little and relax. This bird is a skua who came looking for lunch. All he ended up with was pictures of himself, and he didn't even want them. We did, though. Back for dinner, we saw signs announcing a rugby match the next day between the USA team at McMurdo and the New Zealand Scott base team. So the next morning, we all climbed aboard one of these for the ride out onto the sea ice to watch the match. Now, the Kiwis in New Zealand live and breathe rugby, and the U.S. team has played them every year and never won. But under a bright Antarctic sun with the active volcano Mount Erebus letting off steam in the distance, the game got underway. It was great fun, even though most of us rooting for McMurdo had no idea how the game was played. Alas, this year would not be any different. The New Zealand Ice Blacks beat the Mount Terror McMurdo team 23 to nil.
Not many people can say they've watched the southernmost rugby match in the world, but we did. The next day would bring a moment I'd waited for all my life. I would stand at the very bottom of the world, the South Pole itself.